Well, greetings from Bethesda Church and from me, Pastor Hank, but really the greetings are from our Holy Spirit who has something to say, who gets us together. We're, we're gathered together for him. So let's pause a moment and honor him. Lord, we're hungry. We need you. The world needs you. We want to be filled with your truth and your life and led to be your people in this hour. Open our hearts to the truth from the word, your word, in Jesus' name, amen. So as you see, the title today, Body, Soul, and Spirit. So there's, where there's three parts, or hopefully, body, soul, and spirit. Because uh, I say hopefully, because uh, there are there have been in our history breaks in that, and there's just been soul and spirit. But I want to begin by reading uh, Romans ten eight, which is the which says the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. So may we hear God's word in faith today. What a wonderful day when Jesus, alive from the dead, came to the gathered believers and breathed the Holy Spirit into them, bringing a grand change of life with the Spirit of Christ, whom they thought was dead, now living in them forever. However, this meant many changes within as their soul would no longer rule. Prior to that, without the Holy Spirit on top ruling, the soul was leading. While the people in David's time were not filled with the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit still worked through believers. Believers such as David. Uh, in Isaiah 42.11, we read, I'm sorry, you know, that's uh, Psalm 42, 11. I didn't catch that. Okay, in Psalm 42, 11, we learn that the Spirit spoke to the king's soul, David's soul. And, and David is speaking, but it's the Spirit of God speaking in David to his inner person, to the soul. And so David, God, really, speaks to his soul, why are you in despair, O oh my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise the help of my countenance and my God. The spirit and his soul were choosing separate paths. But let's, let's catch that here the spirit is speaking to the soul. So the Holy Spirit in the people of God wants to speak to our souls and lead them so that they too will know the, the power of God. Another similar song of David is Psalm 103, 1 through 5, where again the Spirit working through him speaks to his soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me. Bless his holy name. Hear the Spirit leading to the soul. He continues, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities. Can you hear the Spirit needing to have this truth to, to go in the direction God has? Who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Notice the benefits of the Spirit of God here. Healing, health, life, loving kindness, compassion, good things, and renewal. Oh, how we need to be, be aware of looking, beware, we need to beware of looking to the soul to lead us when the plan of our Creator is for the Spirit of God to lead our souls. Our soul is intended to surrender to God, just as Jesus explained. If anyone wishes to come after me, 
he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's in Matthew 16, 24. But the Spirit of God is in the believer to do this. Catch that. This great thing that is deny yourself, take up your cross. But the Spirit of God is in the believer to do this and lead us into victory. The Spirit of God is in the believer. However, our enemy, Satan, works to overcome us by seeking to return the soul from living the Spirit's way to go his way. He wants to turn that soul to go its own way. But that's the enemy, Satan. That's what he... he, The soul, the mind, the will... The soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's the area Satan attacks. He cannot get the Holy Spirit, so he attacks us in that inner person man, in the soul. We get a perspective of the enemy's works in James 3, 14 to 15. If you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but it's earthy, naturally demonic. Now notice that. If you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and, and lie against the truth. This wisdom this arrogance comes, comes, does not come down from above. But it's notice the three things. It's earthy, natural, demonic. That's what the enemy is doing. Notice the order of these last three which do not come from heaven. Earthy, natural, demonic. Now Derek Prince has made the point that these are in a definite order. First is earthy, which is not focused on the others or a relationship with God either. But what it, the earthy one, is focused on what it can have. Next is the natural. But as we might expect, this word source is not really the plain word natural, but literally in the Greek it is soulish. Thus, we are warned about a wisdom not from above, this is not from the Holy Spirit, but of our deceptive enemy, Satan. He's after us. Now, the third word of the three is demonic. Now, this, people being demonic, this is often disregarded with explanations such as Christians cannot have demons. However, people can begin to turn from closeness to their spiritual relationship with God. And as Derek Prince explains, one can go back in your soul relationship. What we can, we, we're to be in the, in the spirit's relationship, but uh, Prince is making the point that we can still go back to our soul relationship, which is earth, earthly, soulish. And the soul, the soul is open to demons. If we can go back to that, then we recognize the soul can open to demons. The possibility seems quite obvious to me in the words of James there, which are, but if you have jealousy and salvation in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, from heaven, but it's earthly, natural, not really natural, remember, soulish, that's the root. It's, it's earthly and soulish and demonic. Notice James is speaking to believers. Why would he warn them of participation in the demonic if such was not possible? Of course, he wouldn't. So let's live in grace. I'm sorry. In grace and follow the Holy Spirit. 
One leading scripture is, quote, this is from Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now look at that, as many as are led. And another way to understand that, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Yes, we agree, but not always. So it's very important how this is understood. Notice the difference in the NAU version. I read the King James Version. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. But in the New American uh, Version and other versions, they read, all who are being led. Being led. Notice the difference. Are led to being led. All who are being led. The original Greek word here may be translated, as the Spirit-filled life Bible does, this way. Continually being led by the Spirit of God. So that, that's continually being led. So we're, we ha probably haven't all reached perfection yet. Uh, so that we are continually being led by the Spirit. So, but we could we could think from the the King James version, for as many as are led by the Spirit, we could think that we have, that we have already reached it, being being led. But no, it's it's progress as well. The sons of God are led by the Holy Spirit, but not always. Likely, this trans translation that is continually being led by the Spirit of God was written by the Spirit-filled Life Bible editor, Jerry Horner, a wonderful teacher who taught me at All Roberts University. What a privilege. Let us remember the Spirit of God who is in us reveals that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Oh, how God loves us. Again, remember the Spirit of God who is in us. He reveals that we are temp the temple of the Holy Spirit and individually members of His temple. And in the temple, we share in God's love, powers, and word by His choice. He's chosen us. He's chosen to give us all this. Oh, how we need to listen to God in the Holy Spirit that He's given to us and not our natural man who needs, needs this, this as well. Now, I want to close with 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now, and this is talking to you and me. May the God of peace sanctify you entirely. And may your, the three, may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Catch this. Because that, that's a big thing to say for the God of peace to sanctify you entirely and the spirit, soul, and body be preserved complete without blame. And here's what the Lord wants us to hear about this. Faithful is he who calls you and he also will bring it to pass in you. Amen?